Support for Steppin' Out is made possible by local author Serata Bonnet. In Notes of Forgiveness, Bonnet shares her childhood story as daughter of famed rockabilly singer Sherry Davis. Notes of Forgiveness, available in bookstores and at serratabonnet.com. I'm Peggy Scott Laborde, and welcome to Stepping Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Ian McNulty, restaurant writer <laughs> for the New Orleans Advocate. Welcome, welcome Thank back. You. Thank Good you to very see much. You. Great to be here. Poppy with the exclamation point, Poppy <laughs> Tooker. <laughs> and of course, she hears her weekly radio program, Louisiana Eats. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hey, Good Peg. to see you. you Hi. Too. Bonnie Warren, author of the brand new book, New Orleans Homes at Christmas, and of course, writes for New Orleans Magazine. Magazine and has a new blog. We'll talk about that in just later too. But welcome, Bonnie. Thank Love you, you in your red. Thank you. Looking Christmas. good, girl. <laughs> and Alan Smason, who is the editor of the online Crescent City Jewish News and also in print too, but covers theater scene for us. And happy hey. New Year to everybody. Happy New Year to you, especially. <laughs> but first off, we start with Puppy. Big news this week. Finally, at long last, the Southern Food and Beverage Museum on Aretha Castle Haley is going to open. The ribbon cutting, the whole city's in at 1 o'clock on Monday. There you'll see the Museum of the American Cocktail, like before, but also the Gallery de Absinthe, the Cooper Cake Collection, and the Gallery of the South, States of Taste, will all open up on Monday. Yay! God bless Liz Williams. Tenacious Liz. She sure <laughs> has worked hard to make this happen. And at 6 p.m., there's a very special guest in town, Jeremiah Towers. Very mm. rare occasion to mm. hear him speak. He's going to talk at 6, also this is free, answering the culinary query, do smartphones replace the family? It's a good <laughs> question. And of course, the really great news for Perlou chef Ryan Hughes is Perlou, his new restaurant and bar, is opening up in the museum. They'll begin serving very soon. There's just a few permits left. Mm -hmm. And the museum will be open and the restaurant Thursday through Monday, so they're closed on Tuesday and Wednesday. It'll be open from 11 a.m. until 5.30 p.m., and it really is going to be something important for the city and great to see, so y'all head on down. Then, I know it's Christmas, Bonnie, in your mind, but <laughs> honestly, we've got to get past Oktoberfest before it's really Christmas. And it's Oktoberfest, and of course, I'm not going to be here next Friday, so it will be October next Friday, and I wanted to let everybody know about planning Oktoberfest fun now, because, you know, in Germany, it's really in September that they celebrate the Oktoberfest. And so Salou Bistro and Bar kept right up with that concept. And on September 20th, they began serving their special menu. Uh, they're serving it right until Halloween, October 31st. It's four courses, $40 per person. Also, everything's available a la carte. And there's German beer pairings available. Beer and potato soup, Flammkuchen. Oh, I could have had two of them. The flatbreads they make, they're incredible. Knockwurst and kartoffel salad, which is, of course is garlic sausage, mm -hmm. potato and egg salad, pickled cabbage, the Chapapila Farms pork shanks with the pumpkin mm -hmm. spatzel, mm -hmm. and the oh, and then it doesn't sound as good as it's really yummy. Grit pudding. This is apparently <laughs> as plain and normal as bread pudding in Germany. Oh. It's delicious, custardy with a cherry glaze and pecan strudel. Those really delicious. And the chef there, the young chef, he's brilliant. I really like Dustin Bryan food. He's doing Saturday pig roasts every Saturday, so you can get your cochon de lait sandwich there. And their happy hour specials are great. Monday through Friday, 3 until 7, half price on all flatbreads, mussels, and drinks. So great happy hour. Then more Oktoberfest. We're going to go to Middendorf's. Everybody needs to go to Middendorf's and see Horst and Karen Pfeiffer. Every Wednesday and Thursday, starting October 6th, going right through November 11th, a new German menu every week for the six-week fest. 
yummy things like stuffed veal shoulder mm. and divine desserts, apple strudel, black forest cake. And if you're real, and it's just the d most delicious. You know, nobody cooks German quite like Horst Pfeiffer does. But if you are hungry for some German food in New Orleans, it's always a party. And it's always Oktoberfest at the Agar House oh, on Conti yeah. Street. 365 days a year, it's always Oktoberfest. 8 a.m. till 10 p.m., <laughs> seven days a week. It's it's all the German classics and a great selection of German beers. You can get German potato pancakes for breakfast. They've got pretzels, potato soup, goulash. You can even have a schnitzel sandwich at lunch. And you can get all those classic side dishes a la carte, like spetzel, German potato salad, red cabbage, sauerkraut, and of course, German chocolate cake for dessert. Mm -hmm. And then I would be remiss if I didn't remind everybody, it's gonna be Deutsches House Oktoberfest. They get rolling on October 10th. It's going through October 25th. Chicken dancing, all the usual fun at their temporary home still on Williams in Kenner. Mm -hmm. But Deutsches House lovers, hang on because building's gonna begin soon on Bayou St. John, bringing them back to their mid-city home. Peg, I figured you'd be the expert. You think it's going to be back in Mid-City next year? Uh, we're hope for the best, <laughs> but I love the designs. You know, they're on the internet. You can see them, and it's a little bit of a dramatic touch on the design of the building. It's really precious, and it's run, going to be run on the bayou. It's going to be so great to have them back in the city. Thank you so much. You too, and Peg. we move to Ian. And Ian, our timing of having you on couldn't be better. Perfect timing. Because anybody subscribing to the New Orleans Advocate it got right. an insert today. Ta-da! Yes, this is our uh, fall dining guide. You know, well, lots of things are new at the New Orleans Advocate. Last spring, we had our first ever New Orleans dining guide uh, that was arranged by neighborhood geographically across the metro area. Uh, this time for the fall, we changed it up a bit, and uh, this time we're looking at uh, types of cuisine and types of restaurants. Uh, we're calling it Feed the Need, because of course <laughs> you're going to satisfy uh, not only the cravings that bring you to the table, uh, but also you know, those occasions and events. Uh, it's just a different way to, uh, to look at the realm of options that uh, this incredibly rich restaurant uh, community that we have offers us. And uh, we picked 120. These are my recommendations for places uh, that I, I, just, I give wholeheartedly uh, approval to for, uh, for, for these various needs that might bring you to a place, whether, again, that's a craving or a type of, uh, of an event or occasion or evening. And uh, we even uh, you know, we, we, uh, interspersed some lists throughout. And then, of course, in the middle, we came up with our, a sort of a bistro menu format uh, <laughs> with quick lists for uh, those cravings that don't fight, quite fit uh, a category. So if you want it's something really that's clever. Sort of light really and clever. restorative or hearty when it gets a little, little uh, cooler back into our, our German eating <laughs> season, uh, different types of drinks around town. So just, a, again, a different way to cut up this uh, just such a vibrant restaurant community that we have and so today I wanted to point out one uh, particular category that I found really interesting to revisit in the course of researching this guide and it's an important one all throughout this guide you'll see everything from African to Vietnamese restaurants I mean more diverse flavors than ever across the city which is wonderful but at the heart of it what really defines our city is that it's New Orleans, it's a Creole city. And we have uh, the, the, uh, that Creole identity plays out in lots of different ways across the restaurant scene. You know, Creole means different things to different people. Uh, but one thing I've been really heartened about are these New Orleans restaurants, only in New Orleans restaurants that are modern, they're newer places, but they, uh, they kind of bridge the old traditions with some of the newer tastes and flavors and trends. So we're starting right off today at Hi-Hat Cafe. Oh yeah. Great example oh. of this. In fact, they're, were our cover boys. They, uh, they, they, provide, they provided this dish that uh, the, John, the great uh, John McCusker, our photographer, shot for us. Um, this is a place right on Ferret Street. It has the classic contours of, uh, of you know, an old time diner, but the food here is just much more fresh and lighter even than, uh, than the norm. It, it, it takes familiar flavors and recasts them a bit, which I love. Uh, going out to Harahan, another similar um, mode at Scyther's Seafood, which looks like a little joint uh, you know, tucked away there in Harahan, 
but they're doing fantastically creative uh, seafood out there. But you know, within within the framework of what you already know, just spun in a different way, with a little more creativity. And Gentilly, uh, the Munch Factory, is another good example. I love of this. the name of that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> it always makes people giggle a little bit, but we, yes. when you get into it, the uh, the cooking here is real deal neighborhood Creole, just done by the younger generation. There's a little mm -hmm. more of a foodie spin on some things. Those are their beignets there, which I love. In Mid City, Toops Meadery. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, what, do we, what do we think of when we think of Cajun food? You know, all traditional stuff, jambalaya, mm -hmm. gumbo, boudin. Well, Toops Meadery is a modern chef-driven restaurant that works those traditions and flavors into a new direction. Uh, Isaac Toops there uh, is the, the and chef. And great Sazeracs, too. Uh, yeah. I always think of uh, Larry Pink Martini. Oh, <laughs> really? if you never Larry had one. Larry makes Right near City Park. And then downtown, uh -huh. Bourne. This place has been around for a few years now. This is the John Besh restaurant that he opened with Chef Brian, Brian Landry. Landry yeah. And uh, the way that they approach Louisiana seafood here is just mm -hmm. tremendous, and it's been getting um, more and more more uh, bold and adventurous, but still always like rooted back in the Louisiana tradition, which I love. And then finally, the sandwich is another one that I want to call out, and that's uh, a new place on Maple Street. It's a po' boy shop, but they do uh, a much more creative, modern approach there. Just added an oyster bar. You can get all these wines by the glass while you're having a say, a, a, a Korean barbecue po' boy, or uh, even a, a grilled vegetable po' boy with tofu remoulade. I mean, it's, uh, it's the- Tofu it's, remoulade. Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the, uh, the po' boy shop uh, format that you recognize, just done up for a new generation. We want to thank New Orleans Advocate for those great photos, oh, too. Oh, terrific, yeah, Man, we work but congratulations, that was a lot of work. Yeah, well, it, it's- It's uh, fun, though. It, it's fun to take, the, take, a, take a, a pulse twice a year of all the changes that have happened in uh, the New Orleans restaurant scene and also to remind ourselves uh, of the good stuff that anchors us, the traditional stuff. So when you pick up your dining guide, you're going to find a lot of new ideas and maybe revisit some of the old favorites that really make New Orleans, New Orleans. Thank you very much, Ian. And we turn to Bonnie. And I know people are saying, wait a minute, we haven't gone to uh, yet. Um, cr we, Christmas seems early. <laughs> We're not even Halloween. But your book is about to come out in just about a week. We're so excited. And you have an upcoming book signing, but uh, we have a sneak preview, and I'm thrilled about this, New Orleans Homes at Christmas, and I, I've asked you, my request was to really identify three homes from your book to focus on, and what a coup. We start off with Archbishop Gregory Amond. My goodness, tell us about that. It's the most wonderful house, and the wonderful thing about it is he has his own mm -hmm. chapel, and, and but what really caught my eye, he had this statue of Santa Claus and baby Jesus. And before we so. get to that, I, I, I am remiss to not mention our wonderful photographer, Cheryl Gerber. Oh, Cheryl Gerber. I mean, you all Here's are the quite cover of the a book. team. And quite a team. Yeah, there's yeah. wonderful Cheryl. Who's but, but having that access uh, is, is so amazing with her photos. You're a good combination, kiddo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I really but back love to being senior, in uh, Archbishop's Archbishop home. Uh -huh. And he couldn't have been more friendly and outgoing. And uh, But it's very sacred. I felt there's the beautiful chapel. It's just an amazing thing. So here's a chance. Um, you know, many Catholics have never been in this home, and you come and visit with us when the book comes out. Yeah. There's the Christmas tree, and uh, it's just very, very, a very special place. Uh, oh, and there's the baby. Talk about warming baby the heart. Jesus huh? with Santa Claus. <laughs> that was just a little special thing, I thought. And there's a lamb. So there, it was very lovely. And um, Everything. What did you do? You just called him and said, hello, may I do your house? How well, does that work? I have to really <laughs> thank Gail Benson, okay. Tom Benson's wife, who helped me with this. I would have probably never gotten in there. <laughs> and we but also, you then, have their house, too. Yes, that's and next that's up the here. next house. Yeah. And it was a lovely house, and everything you would expect uh, it to be. And Gail is so charming. She is an interior designer. Here's yeah. their living room, and that is oh. a portrait by Garland Robinette. Wow. And it is a beautiful portrait, but she is bold with color, as you can see, and it's just charming and decorated beautifully. Um, She's Every, such an elegant lady to begin And here's with the too. dining room, uh -huh. and oh. can you imagine the beautiful uh, settings uh, at the table? They were just marvelous. Everything about that house is wonderful. And this is actually a very unique tree that has silver ornaments on it, all sterling silver, mm. gold leaf stand, and then a collection of sterling silver Christmas ornaments. So it's really a wonderful 
place. And then in contrast with that. <laughs> and now for something completely different. Yeah. It's still very special um, too. I think it's very special. Yeah. And we all know that Jim Munger is a collector of contemporary art. And uh, his house was just a dream because it was just a very different. We also, there's Jim's home. It looks, and tra it's it looks traditional, uh, you know, it on is, the, the facade. Uh, but everything about mm -hmm. it is, is fun. He takes it very lightheartedly and it is really beautiful and uh, there's every every space in it was just wonderfully decorated. There's a Batman painting and some snowflakes <laughs> in the centerpiece. So it's very interesting. And this is a famous Chihuly uh, glass sculpture. Wow. Uh, and everything about this house. Also, we have Eric Hess's very contemporary home. And uh, one of the most interesting was um, Chet Pochet's a home where they actually made the Christmas tree out of plywood. Oh. And it was a white Christmas tree, so it was very And you've got a book signing coming up. Yes, we have a book signing um, coming up on uh, at... Uh, the 11th, huh? Is the it? October 11th, mm -hmm. the Garden District Bookstore. And then Sunday, uh, Cheryl and I will be honored as a guest of... Uh, uh, the this is Pirates Focus. Alley? Yeah. yeah uh, no, Faulkner it's an 18, uh -huh. 18 St. Charles. Well, we chose that house because uh -huh. that's featured. You know, four, we have four wonderful dinner parties in the house, in the book, and they have recipes. Mm -hmm. But the number to call for tickets is 524-2940. Okay, great. Now, Bonnie, just as an aside, because you're a, a busy bee, I know you've been <laughs> covering um, houses for New Orleans Magazine for many, many years, but now you've got a blog for the new Biz Magazine. I'm Tell having us about that. so much fun with that because it's not too reverent. I've done wonderful <laughs> things. I started off with writing about Eric Paulson's colorful socks. And then I went from that to a lady who collects glasses. And she said she just goes to her shelf of glasses and she decides who she wants to be that day. Huh. And some days she thinks she wants to be Janis Joplin. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> wonderful. Biz Very Magazine. Fun. Great. Right. And turning to Alan. Oh, my goodness, Alan, you have so much to talk about. Well, we but do. we have to talk about NCIS first. Yeah, Your well, thoughts, Well, sir. first of all, I want to I say I'm a big fan of the NCIS TV show series for most of his 11 years history. Uh, there's been a bit of New Orleans in it from the start. Those of you who have followed it know that Polly Perrette, who plays Abby Shuto, her character and the actress herself was born here in New Orleans. So that's kind of a little New Orleans connection, the forensic expert. But anyway, the idea of having an NCIS in New Orleans, you know, was something when they announced that gave me great, great uh, excitement. And again, I had a little trepidation. As it turns out, the series premiere did very well. They're off to a great mm -hmm. start. 17.1 million viewers <laughs> and a 2.5 rating and a seven share to adults 18 to 49 now, that may not make a lot of sense to us but advertisers are very happy with it right now <laughs> now unlike uh, some of the series that have come down before Treme I think got a, got a, a, a pretty good uh, review for most local people but Fox's Cayville, for instance, uh, you know, that had a little bit of a negative uh, uh, turnout because of the gumbo parties that they <laughs> supposedly associated with New Orleans. I'm not acquainted uh, with New Orleanians who, for instance, cook so-called eggs creole, <laughs> andouille sausage, and rumelard sauce. That's the way they pronounce it, rumelard. Uh, so uh, anyway, some yeah. of the shots were also a little confusing. Some key scenes took place on the East Bank and then immediately on the West Bank. Well, you know, but yeah. you know what? For the people who are here, it is great a blessing. PR it's great for New Orleans. It probably won't matter to any of the other people who are the millions of fans watching the show. It's produced again by Mark Harmon, you know, and he's the main guy on, on NCIS. So we're looking forward Beignets to a lot of and lemonade. Yep, <laughs> <Okay>. lemonade. <laughs> have it all, all the time. Right. So some news, sir. Yes, we do Whoa. have some very important news. First of all, the sudden resignation of Cassie Steck Worley as the artistic director at Le Petit this week was a little bit of a shock. It leaves a big void in the community theater house. Cassie, of course, was uh, the uh, uh, Masha in the, in the last production they did of a Vanya and Sonia and Masha and Spike, and she's been a member of the Le Petit Board since 2007 and was the president since 2010. Uh, she oversaw that financial arrangement that allowed Dickie Brennan and Tableau to come in and uh, essentially bring in about $3 million worth of, uh, of money and cash into the uh, Strap Theater there. But uh, it was, uh, you know, Cassie who had to make that decision to close down the season that uh, they made. It was a very difficult decision and, until they could get their money uh, and their house in order 
if you will. Um, it's amazing to me, though, that this announcement of a new director comes down again. You know, in the past few years, think about it. We've gone from Stocker Fontlude to Sonny Boy to Gary Solomon, and for a short time, Carl Lengel, and now Cassie's departed. Well, we so, wish her well, though. Of course. She worked and they hard. said it was an amicable parting, that they're all, you know, uh, on very good terms. Supposedly, she's leaving to uh, get some new. And Leon uh, yeah. Contravespri. Well, will what's be happening is Leon, Leon's going to be interim, interim director. I've already talked to him. He assures me that he is only going to be an interim director, that he's not looking uh, for the permanent selection there. They're looking right now for, uh, for a replacement, and hopefully the board will, will find that very soon. Meanwhile, across the city, though, to the hallowed halls at Tulane University, there's much buzz today about the longtime leadership of faculty member B. Michael Howard, of course, mm -hmm. who's been the longtime head of the artistic director, if you will, at Summer Lyric Theater at Tulane. Uh, while a spokesman for Summer uh, Lyric would not confirm or deny anything about Michael in particular, they did admit that there is an announcement that's being ready for Tuesday. So we're all waiting with bated breath to hear what's going to be happening four days hence. And we wish him well, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm certain that part of the reason that they're, they're delaying the announcement is that part of this has to do with a faculty position, including tenure and salary. So there's a lot that's, that's going on there. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to one of the uh, highlights of the season that I've seen so far, and that is Shrek the Musical. For those of you who haven't had a chance to go out and see it, this is the Rivertown Theaters of the Forming Arts production. It's going to be ending, unfortunately, this weekend. That's the bad news, but the good news is we have a video to take a look at some of the wonderful, wonderful show that's being put on the stage at uh, Rivertown. Take a look. You're my rescuer. Now remove your helmet. Look, I really don't think that's Just a good idea. Just take off the helmet. I said no. Just it's take not it off. gonna happen. Now. You're an ogre. <laughs> Now, Kevin T. Murphy played Shrek, and Kelly Fushi was, of course, Fiona. Mason Wood was in the production. A fabulous show. I can't really go through all the great uh, personal performances that were given, but it is a must-see. If you haven't seen it, top-notch performances and great production values. And again, hands off. Uh, hat Hands clap together, if you will, for <laughs> all the people over there involved in that. And then one other thing I want to mention, the set design was also very good by Shelby Mack. Now, I recognize uh, that name Shelby Mack as a set designer there, but she's very important to the Andrew Sisters tribute show that's going on at the... Uh, uh, World War II Museum that is at the Stage Door Canteen. So I want to mention that as well. Shrek the Musical with Shelby Mack's uh, stage uh, designs. And then let's move on over to Shelby Mack as Patty Andrews with Mandy Ridgedale as Laverne Andrews and uh, Christina Perez as uh, Maxine Andrews. Wow, all part of a fantastic show choreographed by Holly Molnar. When these girls start at the very beginning of the show, they don't stop except for a costume change. It's fantastic work. Not only the singing, I got to tell you, was just so emblematic of the Andrews sisters. I thought when I closed my eyes, I was listening to the actual real deal. There I am with, uh, with the girls. America's wartime sweetheart, a uh, tribute to the Andrews Sisters is going to stop around Christmas time, but then it'll come back. It's going to run for a whole year. So keep that in mind. Also, on the boards for the last day, coming up Monday on the 29th, is going to be Thin Walls. That's uh, Michael Allen Zell's uh, latest production. Uh, keep in mind also that at the Always Theater coming up soon. We're going to have Shiner. This is the uh, NOLA Project's last uh, production that's coming out. Uh, they're going to be talking about these two, uh, if you will, uh, grunge uh, people from the Seattle area, uh, you know, uh, essentially going to go see their uh, Kurt Cobain and, and, and the people in Nirvana. And, and again, they find out that he's committed suicide and it, it goes down a dark path at that point. And also coming up soon is Broomstick. That's John Bigonet's uh, production that's uh, going to be hitting the boards uh, October the 4th through November the 2nd. So Thank keep you that in so mind. much, Alan. Lots of stuff. And now it's time, though, for our Artist Spotlight. Tonight we're featuring two pieces of refrigerator art. The first is titled Fats Domino, original duct tape art by Justin Lundgren. And he is originally from Cincinnati. Lundgren has been a, look at that, that's amazing, that's cool. New Orleans resident for over 20 years. He practices neurosurgery locally mm. and still finds time to pursue creative interest. The second is Fridge Door by Rhonda 
Loyola Stevens, a cum laude graduate of Loyola University. Stevens founded the Southern Art Society Fine Art Studio, where she has been teaching art to children and adults for over 13 years. Both pieces are included in the International School of Louisiana's 11th Annual Refrigerator Art Auction and Gala. That's Phantom Masquerade, it's called. It's tomorrow evening at Generations Hall. The patron party begins at 6 p.m. and the gala is at 7, and tickets are still available at the door. Visit isl-edu.org for more information. And you can visit wyes.org to see our online calendar. You can also go to WYES.org to see our program online, too. New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Bill McHugh gave us the names of the Navy ship that was built in New Orleans utilizing some steel from the World Trade Center and the shipyard where it was christened, the USS New York and Avondale. Now, tonight's question. A prominent building on the UNO campus is named after the governor at the time the university was founded. What is the building and what is the governor? Who was the governor? Email your answers to steppinout at wyes.org. Our prizes, a Louisiana Life magazine subscription, a gift certificate for two, courtesy of Vianne's Tea House, offering their culinary and gourmet tea experience. And tonight we have an apron as worn by WYS intern, <laughs> Berg Bischoff. With the message, the sun also Riesling, <laughs> from our friends at wearablevegetables.com. And now our picks, Bonnie, once again, your website, kiddo. Uh, Bonnie Warren, Nola, one. Dot com. Very good, thank you. With the glorious Bobby. weather, I picked Balcony Dining mm. at Dickie Brennan's Tableau on Jackson Square. Two course chef's lunch for just $14. All right, Ian. Beer lovers, go to City Park on Saturday for New Orleans on tap. 200 plus beers, lots of home brews that you won't find anywhere else. City Park on Saturday, bring your Alan. dog. And the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra kicks off their season with the Enigma Variations at Saturday night. All right, and now my picks. We've got the Arts Market of New Orleans. Of course, that takes place tomorrow at Palmer Park from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Visit the Arts Council of New Orleans.org for details. Smithsonian Magazine's Museum Day Live is tomorrow, and one ticket for two free admission to uh, participating local museums. There are many, many of them, and you can see the information there. There are lots of them, including the Historic New Orleans Collection, the Ogden. There's a whole list uh, going along there, too. And we We've got so much else going on, but you can go directly to that. Look at that. We've got the Tipitina's Foundation Rhythm and Blues 5K, and it, it starts and ends at Tipitina. So check that out as well. And what else do we have going on? We've got a Musica de Camera. It's one of my favorite groups. They're a medieval music group. A voice still heard, medieval Sephardic song. That's Sunday, September 28th, this Sunday at St. Joseph Abbey. And now we leave you, though, with a glimpse of our most recent Fab Four concert, tribute to the Beatles. That was at Tag Gormley Stadium. WYS made that happen. Here's a little bit of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Thank you all very much. Oh, Good night.
Support for Steppin' Out is made possible by local author Sarada Bonnet. In Notes of Forgiveness, Bonnet shares her childhood story as daughter of famed rockabilly singer Sherry Davis. Notes of Forgiveness, available in bookstores and at saradabonnet.com.